Shop.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies, many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Coast to Coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. You're listening to the Alex Jones Show. Thank you for joining us on this original June 1st, 2014 Sunday broadcast. We're now into the two final segments, and we've saved some of the most informative, thought-provoking information to the last. And that is Dr. Steve Pachenik. I won't go over his whole bio in the interest of time, but he co-authored a lot of books with Tom Clancy. They've got uh, a posthumously published book that he worked on with Clancy uh, that is coming out as we speak. We'll get... Uh, Dr. Pachenik to mention that at the end because it's interesting and it ties into what's happening currently. That's why people like Tom Clancy and Pachenik's books is because they accurately predict so much of what then unfolds. But the reason I wanted to get him on is that he said back last year, but, but then again in February on the nightly news here at Infowars.com that he thinks Snowden is a setup. All I know is they don't want it known that the NSA is spying on everybody. They don't want it known that this is happening and going on. But if it's already going to come out, could he then become the authority, an avatar, as Pachenik called it, and be a limited hangout, basically, to then control the information? Or could he work for big corporations like Google and Microsoft that are doing more spying than the NSA is doing? And that's admitted. I'm not saying I agree with Pachenik, but he did run psychological operations for the State Department, 
uh, and, he, and he is a famous psych warfare guy in his own right. He knows General Alexander. I know he knows Clapper and people. So we're going to find out if it's his opinion. He's saying that he thinks this is an elaborate operation with Snowden or whether uh, he has actual proof of that. But first, I wanted to play a brief clip of Brian Williams on NBC. The reason we're having Pachinik back on, last week, uh, he came out and said, oh, I was trained as a spy. I worked for the CIA and NSA. That's what Pachinik had said in multiple interviews, was that, you know, to quote Pachinik, he's more than just a technician, Alex. Well, now he's saying that himself. So here's Brian Williams with Snowden. Um. I was trained as a spy in sort of the traditional sense of the word in that I lived and worked undercover overseas, uh, pretending to work in a job that I'm not, uh, and even being assigned a name that was not mine. Um, but I am a technical specialist. I am a technical expert. All right, that's enough. The interview got a lot of attention. I'm not going to replay the clips of Pachenik predicting that he would come out and say that. We aired it last week on the show, but now we've got Pachenik on this Sunday. Doc, we've only got this segment and the next, so let's condense it down. Thanks for coming on the Sunday show on short notice. Um, break down why you said that and why it's important and, and uh, what you say about his new comments. I want to thank you very much, and I want to thank your audience. The reason I said it is because I know the modus operandi of the CIA. The very important thing that you have to understand about Snowden is that he is a manufactured a product of the CIA or the military industrial complex. Why do I say that? Number one, he follows the modus operandi of the predecessor, Daniel Ellsberg. Both were so-called in the military. Uh, Snowden failed the so-called special forces. That's what he claimed. Uh, he was never qualified. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg was in military intelligence and worked at the State Department as the cover, but was really in the CIA working for General Lansdale. That was 40 years ago. Both came out in terms of a company that was not apparently affiliated with the military intelligence uh, complex. In the case of uh, Ellsberg, it was the Rand Corporation where I came in and I worked on the Soviet Union. And in the case of uh, Snowden, it was Booz Allen that received $6 billion from the CIA directly, and the head of Booz Allen at the time that Snowden was in there was McKiernan, who was deputy director, acting DCI of the CIA, and now the head of it was McDonnell, uh, who is a naval intelligence officer. And so James Clapper was in uh, Booz Allen, as were many other CIA operatives, and so he came out of the CIA, born bred out of the CIA. What he said, and what he said specifically in this interview with Brian Williams, where Brian Williams was totally had by an operative, because if you listen to the words that Snowden said, he said very distinctly, I am a CIA spy. I predicted that a year ago. I predicted that on your show six months ago. What does that really mean? What that really means is that the CIA, and Snowden in particular, is working with his handlers, who in particular is a man named John Brennan. That's the one name that has not come out repeatedly in his conversation or his indictments. What Snowden said was, I'm against people like Keith Alexander, and I happen to know Keith Alexander. I like him, but that doesn't mean I justify that he had a massive surveillance of the American public. But the two people that Snowden attacked were military officials, one who was particularly very powerful, and that was Keith Alexander. And that's what you said last year when no one was saying it. You Correct. said it was part of a inner CIA Pentagon power Correct. struggle, which they now admit Benghazi is a big part of. Exactly. This is the extension of Benghazi and the CIA and the military fighting out the control of the military industrial complex, as it's evidenced by companies like SAIC, Booz Allen, MITRE, L3 Corporation. This has nothing to do with the American public, the safety of the American public, the national security, or with the sanctity of our nation. This has to do simply with the fact that the military-industrial complex, particularly the intelligence corporation, could care less about our safety as does the military. Because the military feels, and this is very painful for me to say, having been a Navy captain, that we do not have a nation anymore. We have an army, but we do not have a nation. We have in America, we have a country, but we do not have an army. And the CIA, military intelligence, National Geospatial Agency, National Security Agency, feels the same way. They don't care about the, uh, the protection and the national security of America. They haven't really done anything to prevent terrorism, to protect us. What they care about is one simple matter. They want to game out the issue 
of who gets the most money in the military industrial complex, particularly in intelligence. That's why I could predict this matter. It's not something I read in tea leaves or I made up. Keith Alexander is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful individual now in national security. He acquired that power because contrary to what the CIA was 30 years ago, which was based on human, which is what Snowden said very specifically, and Snowden was very proud of the fact that he was part of an intelligence gathering capacity where you don't have to go to college anymore. And it's true. You just have to be very proficient on the Internet. So people like Snowden were hired by the CIA went through the National Security Agency, at the same time worked at the Defense Intelligence Agency, because all of the other groups, including the CIA, are not as, as proficient as the National Security Sure, Agency. sure, and, 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 and you've worked in the State Department, you know, but mainly from the Army angle, helping found Delta Force, and that's on record. Correct. I helped found Delta Force with Larry Eagleberry. I'm not going to tell full credit. The reason we didn't have a Delta Force is because... We had hostage negotiations 30 years ago. I didn't have the counterpart to what the British had, the SAS, and we needed a key force. And that's why we nurtured, Larry Eagleberger and I nurtured special forces and Delta Force so that we could have a precision instrument to go in and strike out people. This now, we're about to go to break. Just, 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 I want to come back again into the bigger picture here and where this is all going. But what, uh, for layman, what is the point then in the warfare inside the establishment what is the point of Snowden, then? What's the objective? The Snowden point is very simply. More money for more intelligence that has nothing to do with the protection of the republic. The republic and America is irrelevant to the aggrandizement of private institutions that are affiliated with our intelligence community. So the CIA grows bigger, more inefficient. NSA goes bigger, more inefficient. The defense intelligence agent grows bigger and inefficient. And America is paying a very heavy price while we lose our capacity to really protect ourselves and to garner any sense of economic strength. We are losing our capacity to be a viable republic because our military and our intelligence system is sucking out the very marrow of our existence, which is money, servitude, loyalty, transparency, sure. and honesty. All right, we'll stay there. we got to go to break. Dr. Steve Pachinik our guest. StevePachinik.com is his excellent website. Find out the latest books that are there. Uh, and more, but we're going to go to break here. I remember seeing people like military uh, professors like Thomas Barnett a decade ago on C-SPAN lecturing at the Naval War College in places telling the generals and the admirals, we don't represent America, we represent Wall Street. And when they say that, they mean a select inside group in Wall Street that are monopoly capitalists who are exempt from taxes, who lobby to raise our taxes to get corporate welfare. I want to get Steve Pachinik's take on that statement if he thinks it's accurate. After the break, I'm Alex Jones. Follow us on Twitter at RealAlexJones and Infowars.com. Stay with us for the final segment. Money. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply 
supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. All right, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. Mypatriotsupply.com slash Alex. Coast to coast. Direct from Austin, you're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Waging war on corruption, it's Alex Jones. It's the time of the season. You know, I just gave a speech uh, in Dallas. Uh, it was a keynote speaker introducing T-Bone Pickens on the fact that only a moral society can be successful. And I know that's an understatement. People understand that. But I'm stating the obvious, but we, we've lost touch of that. There are a lot of smart people and resources in third world countries, but they just let bureaucracies take over in special interest. And I want to get into what you're saying in a private email to me. And I, I want to get your full take on this, Dr. Pachenik. Elliot Roger. From the Santa Monica shooting last week that's been collectively blamed on white males and gun owners, even though half the people he purportedly killed, he used a knife on. I want to get your take as a, a military... Go over it. Remember, I told you Sandy Hook was a false flag and that came out to be true. This one's a false flag, too. Well, I want to get into that in a moment, but finishing up yes. uh, with the whole point of Snowden and where this is going. I mean, he seemed extremely confident I would almost say arrogant in that interview with Brian Williams, like they're trying to rehab him to take him back to the country like Lee Harvey Oswald, who we know was a CIA operative and never joined the Russians. Yeah, you have to understand, Snowden qua Snowden doesn't mean anything. Snowden's part of the game that the CIA and the intelligence community is playing off of the backdrop of America, Russia, and China. You have to understand, Snowden just represents an institution which really has to take down a much more powerful institution like the National Security Agency and really wants to garner and, and create a narrative which, create, which is a, a false narrative. They, they, what they want to do, Snowden and his handlers... So it's just like the FBI and CIA always want to make the other the bad guy. Exactly. You're, you're saying it's CIA wanting to get all the blame off it onto the NSA. Well, not 
not only that, they want to say there's good guys and bad guys. The truth of the matter is this is not about bad guys and good guys. This is about people who want to play games with the American public and taxpayers. And, the, and all of them want to play games with the taxpayers because all of our military generals go back into SAC or Booz Allen. They get $6 billion from the CIA, James Clapper. You got, uh, you know, the same thing. You have John Brennan, who's never been brought up on charges of illegal activities on 9-11, Benghazi. He was accused in Benghazi, and I said it repeatedly. He's been accused of drone attacks, yet the FBI has never investigated him. Secret Service has never investigated him. ATF has never investigated him, but it's the one man that Snowden doesn't want to mention. And by that very absence in intelligence and counterintelligence, I can tell you that he's his handler, and that the CIA is very much embedded in this kind of gaming that goes on. And it's Eisenhower who said they have created a legacy of ashes. And it was Jimmy Carter, whom I served, who got rid of 4,000 operatives. It's time now for America to say it's enough with the CIA, enough with our intelligence community. We're going to cut off funding in general, and then we're going to bring in people who can really understand what is required. To well, they've the tripled national. the size of the CIA. They're operating domestically, and they're, they've got their minions just running around everywhere. They've had Homeland Security try to recruit every doctor my dad knows to spy on their patients and people. And when they get deeper enough into it, because he managed hundreds of doctors, he just retired, yes. he dug into it and found out it's connected to the CIA. What is the CIA doing trying to recruit every do doctor and dentist? Well, in the it's, it's again, it's a self-aggrandizement. What happened is over 30 years in, in working in the State Department and overseeing the CIA and many opportunities, they have really been dysfunctional. And in the Soviet Union, in Thailand, I had to get rid of the station chief in Paris. I had to get rid of the station chief in Panama. I had to get rid of the station chief in Panama. I had to get rid of some of their operatives. And basically what's happening, it's an organization that's so filled, and I not have anything against this religion, basically Irish Catholic individuals. You have Brennan, McKiernan, you have Donlan, you have Doyle, you have Keith Alexander, all of whom follow the catechism of hierarchy. And with this type of ritualization that's instilled, and I have nothing against Catholics, my family's partly Catholic, if you have embedded in the CIA a hierarchy which has this false notion that they have to follow orders irrespective of the legality of the orders. John Brennan has to be called forth in front of a committee just as uh, Colby was in front of a committee of independent prosecutors and testify about Benghazi, testify about 9-11, testify about the drone attacks, testify about Snowden, testify about how, who he knew, because the one name that does not come out is the very name that's involved in all of this, including McTiernan, who was acting head of the CIA. What's happening is the aggrandizement and self-aggrandizement of intelligence communities at the expense of the republic that is the expense of the American taxpayer is out of control and it's destroying our nation. We do not have more security because it's bigger. We have less security because it's ineffective. And the CIA wants to have the capacity that the NSA had in electronic surveillance, which didn't prove to be better. It just proved to be bigger and more expensive and more deadly to our freedom. Well, it sounds like a recipe for disaster to have 800,000 private contractors and more than 50 companies with access to all the super secret spy hubs. I mean, that just sounds like a way to be infiltrated. By not just foreign governments, but every other corporation. That's it, correct. It sounds like a takedown plan of the country. Well, it's not purposeful. We're not that clever. In other words, whenever you think that anybody's planning to take it down, whether it's the Council on Foreign Relations or anybody, then nobody's that clever. What it is is greed, self-aggrandizement, and stupidity. And by the way, you've been pretty big in the CFR for a long time, but I know got out of it. I mean, you, and Well, it was a waste of my money and time. Because what happened is you have every flotsam and jetsam. It was really like a nursing home for those who weren't able to do anything and a nursing home for a lot of neocon Jews who did uh, terrible things in 9-11. Richard Haas, Elliot Abrams, you had a whole bunch of them. And, and Fife, who was still accountable, but they're sitting in the, in the uh, Council on Foreign Relations espousing. They have protection, but I wasn't interested in that. What I'm interested in doing very simply... Steve, Steve, how would you describe yourself? Because you're, you're Jewish and Catholic, right? Yeah, I'm Jewish, but 
my aunt is Catholic. I was grown. I grew up in a, in, in Cuba because the American uh, liberal democracy didn't allow us in. Thanks to Roosevelt, my whole family was exterminated by the Germans. I grew up uh, at the age of six. I came to the United States. Grew up on 108th Street in Amsterdam. Went to, well, one of us went to Booker T. Washington, a black school. It wasn't Obama. It was someday. Me. I want to get you on just about all your spy stories that you can talk okay. about and how you help. Point is, I'm just an American citizen, and and I'm, I'm willing to save, it, work against for this country. Put my line on the, my life on the line again. Say, look. Now, I understand. Let, let me get state. you on soon to, to do a whole discussion about this. We only got about three minutes left. No Briefly, problem. why? What do you think really happened with the bizarre Santa Monica mass well, shooting? The Santa Monica follows the entire uh, 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 protocol of Sandy Hook. It's false flag. It's a liberal community. It's tied into Susan Collins' Hunger Game. You have a directive Hunger Game. There's no such guy. Is Rogers? You can't have a mentally ill kid kill. Why the last three 13. shootings have Hunger Games connections? What's the point of because that? Because of that, Susan Collins was writing that she was co-opted by the entire system to be uh, to play out uh, the scenario of anti-gun control, when in fact she was making money on the very notion of Hobbesian killing and and people being uh, atavistic. And she is very very dangerous in this community of pro, you know, anti-gun, and it's not an accident, it's related to Susan Collins, who lives in Newtown. You well, well I was about to say, a lot of those movies are actually very, they act like they're pro, uh, uh, you know, revolt against tyranny, but they're kind of Marxist. They're Marxist, they're basically stupid, but what I'm saying is, this a mental health kid cannot kill seven people, wound 13, and stab three. It's impossible. I ran a maximum security ward at St. Elizabeth's Hospital, where I had the criminally insane and they can't write 140 pages and write a video about themselves. So this is, again, a redux of Newtown. It's a tire false flag. And a Mr. Martinez who talks about craven politicians, it's absurd. I've never used that word, craven. If you look it up cowardly, nobody talks about that in grief. So this is, again, a false flag. And you have to go back to Obama. You have to go back to the FBI. You have to go back to Eric Holder. Well, the FBI, even the New York Times admits, out of 100 bombing plots, 99 were staged by the FBI. That article came out a few years ago. Well, they have to be accountable again. You have a new director, and I want to know where is the ATF, Agency for Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms? Where's the FBI? Where's Eric Holder? Where the, where's the subpoenas coming in for false flag? It can't continue, and the president has to be held accountable. Again. Well, I want to get you back on soon. Tell us about the new book, posthumously, that you and uh, you and Clancy worked up, and then you. Uh, well, I have two excellent writers, George Galderosi, D. Couch. They're both uh, special. They were in uh, the Navy Intelligence. They work in, in uh, Coronado Beach, and what we did was to create a scenario several years ago with Clancy, uh, he and I, about Syria and the importance of the fact that if uh, Muslims were killing Christians, both in Syria and the Middle East. And how Syria, Iran, and Saudi Arabia were all in, in a, in a uh, cahoots or in playing off one another and creating a civil war in Syria where the Iranians were fighting Saudi Arabia and where the American government got involved accidentally. And it all so, ended up basically happening. It's out of the ashes, Dr. Steve yeah, Pachanik. Out of the ashes, uh, Tom Clancy's op center with George Galderosi and Dick Couch. Same all right. Thank friend. you so much. My for, pleasure. Thank Alex, you for coming thank on. You. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a. A uh, good rest of your w weekend. Okay, thank you so much. There goes Dr. Steve Pachenik. That's it for me, your host, Alex Jones. I'll be back tomorrow live with the weekday transmission, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Great job to the crew, all of our affiliate sponsors, our listeners, and the good Lord above. Until then, be safe and promote liberty. Sure, what do you think about